um, it's important for us to share our transparent stories like we're telling so that not only girls and other women can know that this role to genuine sisterhood, this role to being an influencer or a community activist or a community liaison, an influencer of any sort, that it's not easy being in these positions. And that's why we need other women and other people to uplift us and help us through these journeys. What do you guys think? I, I think you're absolutely right. But, you know, I, I also think um, you have to understand and know that there's a time and a season, you know, and you have to look at what lesson you take out of every experience. So even mm -hmm. if it's a bad experience, there is Just a, lesson. a lesson. There's a lesson in it for you. Know, for you. Uh, and, and if you're real good, you'll take that lesson and be able to pass it on and pass it down to your younger siblings, you know, your girlfriends, um, and so forth. I, I, I have a few friends that are a little bit younger than me. Um, you know, and as you get older, you start getting hot flashes and you mm -hmm. get chemical, your chemical changes and, you know, you're angry at the world and, and you don't even really understand why, you know, but as a friend, if you've been there, if that's something that you've gone through, you know, you have to be able to take your sister or your friend and say, you tripping. <laughs> you know, hold up back, back mm -hmm. up off of it a minute yeah it, it could be a situation where you want to let it all out and you know go into hysterics and it might be rightfully so but people will, will not remember why you went off they'll mm -hmm. just remember that you went off you mm -hmm. know so I, I say that to say you know we have to be mindful people they are watching they watching they paying attention they looking for you to mess up and do something wrong you know and so when i'm in a board meeting or when i'm in, uh, in front of people and um something might be said they could be taken the wrong way i choose to take the high road you know yeah, i choose yeah. to to not respond back and that is you know i've learned that I've learned that over time. I, I was that girl who would pop off in a, in, in a minute because I, growing up, I felt like I had to. I was the lightest one in my neighborhood, you know, and I, I had this complex where I had to prove my blackness, prove that I was about it, about it, and if you tried it, I was going to get at you, you know, but you, after a while, you realize, like, that does not serve you well. You can catch more bees with honey than you can more be more what is it more flies with honey yeah. than you can vinegar <laughs> <laughs> yes. a nasty negative person always pointing out the you know people's shortcomings will not serve you well I, in the you know i can't world. speak for other women but i think if i'm speaking for myself and especially women who you know are caregivers in one way or another whether they're wives or mothers i think um, because there's so much self-sacrifice with women, and we had this conversation at the beginning of our, our, our interview here, we don't necessarily see ourselves in the way that others see us. And if we're pouring out of empty cups, it's kind of hard to like replenish that and develop that view. And so having a tribe kind of helps fill your cup in a lot of ways. It helps you identify with people who have similar experiences. It helps you surround yourself with people who see the things in you that you don't see and help you to see them. And it also um, helps you build a support network, you know, for people who can help you realize your dreams, you know, help push you when you need that push, help correct you when you need correcting. And so it's so important to surround yourself with a tribe of women that, you know, you connect with. I just think it's important. Sisterhood is important. And then Natasha, <laughs> your story um, reminds me of I had sat on a board for a, a nonprofit that was all around reading. And so, you know, I'm, I'm all about literacy. And they asked me to be the program director. And so I said, okay, that's fine. But I noticed that the, the founder, she would send out these email blasts to the parents and they will always have a lot of grammatical errors in them and spelling errors. <laughs> and so I was like, oh my gosh, how can I be a part of something that's promoting literacy? And the CEO and founder, 
you know, she's sending out these emails to the parents. So I sent her an email on the side and said, hey, um, before you send out the email, would you mind if maybe one of us on the board, you know, we can proofread it, edit it, send it back to you. And if it's okay, then you send out the blast. And so she responded and was just like, well, I don't understand what was wrong with my email. So then I was like, okay, now I'm going to tell you some of the errors that was in there. Do you know that uh, she got really offended yeah. and I was kicked off the board, uh, unbeknownst to me. I didn't even know about it until wow. they, they sent me an email saying, hey, you're kicked off the board. And I was so passionate about making sure that these young girls, we had these book discussions and I created the curriculum and I was so excited, <laughs> like month after month, I was going in there. And so five years later, here I am running my own business. And I actually uh, met up with a reading specialist from Instagram, social media. She saw my post and we became really good friends. And now we're starting our own nonprofit uh, foundation. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 You know, and, and the crazy thing is like, um, thank you. Like, like my new saying, you know, hey, sometimes you got to take certain lessons and then understand that there's a certain season. So maybe all of the passion that I had, she didn't appreciate it because she felt that I was kind of dimming her light. Yep. But long, you know, behold, I have someone who's like, hey, let's do this, you know, literacy foundation, you know, Detroit needed, let's go. And so I'm just happy to be in a different space, you know. And yes, and that's beautiful. That's, that's again, the, the perfect example of a woman tearing down and a woman builds up, you know. And so I think it's important for us to always look out that, look at the, the ladder. It's the people who are building us up rather than the people who are tearing us down, you know. Um, those are some really great examples, ladies. Now, to wrap this up, I have this question here. But I would love to share with the world what each of you are currently working on and um, what your future endeavors are. So let's start. I'm, I'm look, let's start with Manu. We're going to go from left to right here for me. Well, you know, uh, I guess Dr. Sabrina called me funny lately, right? So when I get off uh, with you guys, I'll be continuing to write uh, Black Caucuses Foundation continuation grant um, for drug-free community. So that's $125,000 a year for five years, and it's renewable for another five. And uh, I wrote that grant really to give back to my old neighborhood, which is Cody Rouge. I'm Joy Row Exit 9. Uh, <laughs> Not the yeah, exit like, number. <laughs> yeah, so that grant is a, a community coalition grant um, to address substance abuse among youth um, in the 482-248-7, zip code area by training people, key leaders, individuals who are from the community to understand and identify the problems and begin to address the problems themselves. We don't need outsiders coming into our communities to solve our problems. We need the tools and the resources and the training to be able to solve it on our own. You know, it's a, a real problem in many communities is it's not that there aren't resources available, it's that people don't know how to obtain the resources mm -hmm. and then they don't have the right people in place to distribute the resources the way that the community can grab hold on to. So um, that's what I'm working on now. Um, and another project that's coming up will be coming up in May. Um, and I think it's really significant because of COVID-19, um, health inequities and social disparities. Um, I've obtained a contract with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services uh, to begin to assess tobacco use behaviors among African Americans so that we can create prevention and cessation programs that work for our people. We are disproportionately affected by tobacco related death and disease. And we, you know, we haven't had the conversation, but over and over again lately, you hear um, them talking about uh, how African Americans, especially in Detroit, are disproportionately being affected by COVID-19 deaths. Well, let's, let's have a real conversation about how many African Americans smoke uh, cigarettes menthol cigarettes and how that affects your lungs. Let's have a real conversation about how many people smoke marijuana. All smoke is bad for your lungs. It doesn't matter if it's coming out of a cigarette, a burning building, the back of a tailpipe, or, uh, or, or a joint. It's all bad. And so um, I'm real excited about this survey. We'll be doing it um, in five um, communities that are um, highly African-American populated in Michigan. And that data will be useful data that we can begin to create programs to help help our people. Um, Latanya, what about you? What What do you have going on over there? 
right, so I'm just gonna share my screen really quick. You guys are the first to know this announcement that I'm making, but this COVID-19 thing has really, um, when I tell you it has taken a toll on, on my life, uh, as far as everything that I do, the schools are shut down, everything is shut down, right? And so I'm trying to figure it all out, like what do I do? And so um, the Lord put on my heart to write a book. So I have a partner, um, the book is called Imagine Your Life When You Demand Greatness During a Time of Crisis. Wow. And so a guide that focuses on um, the first 30 days is on hope and faith, really just empowering people to keep their faith right now during these tough times. The next volume is on resilience, just helping people understand the importance of pressing through adversity and, and knowing that we're going to make it through. And then the last volume is on uh, um, victory, which is celebrating that, you know, every day that we get up and we live and breathe is for a reason. God has a purpose for our life. And so um, I think it's going to be a really good book. I found it to be very therapeutic. Um, in these tough times, my daughter lost her grandfather. Um, I lost a very, very close friend of mine from this virus. And so the book has really helped me um, to get through my panic attacks, um, to get through what I could have been depressed about. Um, just going back now and reading the content that just spilled out my heart um, mm -hmm. has motivated me so much that I'm just so excited mm -hmm. to um, to really push this book out. And I know right now everybody's in a space where, oh, I'm not touching anybody. I'm not doing anything. So it's actually going to be an ebook. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have a virtual um, book release. So I would love for all of you to be a part of it. I'm going to make the announcement sometime next week. I was just trying to make sure I gathered all my content. So I'm wrapping up the last volume um, this evening. So I've been I've been home, uh, homeschooling, and I've been teaching my little person, and I've also been um, writing this book, and when I tell you, it has been my sanity, and I pray that it helps so many people that read it. Um, I, as you guys know, I wrote my first book and pushed it out uh, last November, and it was amazing, and so to see that I'm actually about to write three more in this short time span, it's like, wow, my God, what are you doing? What is this? You know, and so... Um, Definitely want to invite you guys to support that um, and come and be a part of what's happening because I feel like if we if we get stuck in, in what's going on right now and we're not looking forward to what's to come and knowing in our hearts that better days are coming, then we're going to be stuck and that's when depression kick in and all of that stuff. And so we have to shift our mindset. We have to change our focus on thinking about the greater things that's coming ahead. And that's what the focus of the book is. So. That's it. That's what I got. Um, I'm excited. Um, I could have, I honestly could have said, you know, when I tell you everything I have is at a stop. So I, I don't know if you know, but I do own a, a small building, a, a, a multi-purpose venue. That's shut down. Um, the programs I went into school, that's shut down. I had 20 speeches lined up from March to uh, May all shut down <laughs> everything stopped so i'm like okay uh the way i make my money is that way so what am i gonna do like i'm a single parent i gotta feed this mouth you know and so um luckily i'm a good steward over my money um so i'm okay um but it's still a challenge and so finding ways to reset and then try to pivot the business virtually has been a challenge for me because i'm a speaker so i like to speak in front of thousands of people i like to move around so sitting here right now it's like what is going on like i'm actually sitting at a table and i can't walk the stage oh my god this is hard so <laughs> um, just getting acclimated to this whole thing but i think that I believe, and I'm going to wrap up here because I don't want to be too long, but I believe that this is really pushing us into our destiny. Whatever God has for us, it's really just opening up uh, more opportunities. When you look at Zoom, look at the reach. We're able to kick it with Sharon from Texas. You know, like you can't do that in a building, you know. So this is a blessing to be able to access technology um, to expand the gifts that God has for us. So that's all I got. Okay, the lovely Sharon McDougal, uh, our hidden modern day figure who is so just the, <laughs> I mean, the volunteer, I mean, I see you volunteering like everywhere and doing all okay, of these please. amazing things. So tell us, what are your future endeavors? What are the initiatives that you're working on? Well, our, I'm a member of, um, I'm the executive administrator for a nonprofit, Unveiled Aspirations. And we have an annual girls conference and an annual women's conference, but they've both been postponed, of course, because of the COVID-19. So hopefully we'll be able to reschedule them for some time later next year. If not, I mean, this year, or if not, they'll go to next year. 
and their empowerment type conferences. And then I, I volunteer and I love to go read to the kids. Of course, that has stopped. But along those same lines, I have a written a children's book. It's not ready yet because my illustrator, <laughs> he's hit by the COVID-19. He's in another country. So uh, hopefully this will end and he go ahead and finish my illustrations. And I, I don't know how long it'll take after the illustrations get done to actually get it packaged up and everything and make it an actual book. But I wrote the book in like uh, an hour and a half. It, you know, What's the name of the book, Sharon? Stood Up for Lunch with Shay. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's too it's cool. So yes. so what can we look forward to seeing from Dr. Carla Mitchell? Well, I am very excited because for the last 12 to 18 months, I've been working on a, a brand to launch a brand of Everyday Herbal. So I'm excited to be introducing a new brand sometime in September. Um, I've been looking for ways to make healthy easy. Mm -hmm. And so I think one of the ways to do that is to put my love and intention in a line of herbals, everyday herbals. And so that's going to be coming out sometime in September. Um, I am possibly going to be relocating and opening, opening a new store. I'm excited about that. And I'm really working hard to launch a series of online herbalism classes. As you may or may not know, I used to teach a free herbalism class in my office. I did it for three years. And then I do a free herbal clinic where my students would be giving free herbal medicine to the community. And my schedule just got so hectic that I could not carve out the time for the students wow. to learn. And so I'm very, so obviously um, COVID-19 is accelerating my need to do this virtual class. And so I've started the recordings um, for this free online herbalism class because my heart resides with promoting longevity mm -hmm. and preventing disease and promoting health and well being. And the easiest way to do that is by ingesting plant based medicine. You can, it's just like food is medicine. And so um, I'm very excited to be delivering this online content for people to learn how to use herbs in their everyday life. So. Thank okay, you. Stacey, what about you? What are your future endeavors? What are, you, what are your uh, future initiatives? Um, future is really, I'm just working with praise. So many of you know, uh, my daughter, she started her own business and she had her launch in January. So we had a really, uh, and our business is to help and support girls to look and be able to identify careers um, that they can look forward to. She has a 10 group of characters. The characters are super cute and they kind of explain what these type of characters do and different things like that. And so her goal was to have a class each month. And so she, it kind of clicked that, oh, we've only had one class. So she asked me the other day, she's like, well, when are we going to do another class? I'm like, I don't know, praise. I don't, I don't even know how those classes are going to work because people are not going anywhere for classes right now. And so she was like, well, can we do something online? I'm like, mm -mm, I'm not really, I don't want to do all of that right now. And that's me being selfish because of the effort that I have to put into to help her with that. But I said on a different note, I said, what you can do is we can start doing um, some short articles. I said, you can do a couple blogs about some of the characters and we can talk about that. Or you can do a couple videos. And she's been doing better with videos. If I could tell you how long it takes her just to do just a quick video it takes a very long time um and part of that is because she's nervous and she's nine and because it's me so um <laughs> that's one of the main things i'm gonna be working on with her and really it's time i have been praying and praying like lord because it's time for me to go back and um get my phd and i've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off um and now it is time and so i've looked into a couple of schools to see about possibly starting in the fall um, a lot of the GRE requirements have been waived, which I'm so glad because I have not taken a GRE. I took a practice GRE and it was like I had never. What's a GRE, guys? What's a GRE? It's a graduate something exam. I forget the middle. Okay. But it's it, the test. It's, it's a, so I won't say what my opinion is. Grad, graduate records exam. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? It, I already know what I know. This test isn't going to tell you anything other than I paid for the test and here's my score. But anyway, one of the benefits that has happened is many of the universities, they're now waiving the GRE requirement, which is a bonus. So then I won't have to look into that. But that's the second thing that I'm looking at to be. Um, I have my, my master's degree is in education and leadership. So I will be looking into, again, educational leadership, but at the K-12 level um, to possibly be able to do something that helps support, um, that has a larger voice. So in the K-12, right now where I am and where I've been over the last 12 years, it's just at the school setting. It's really local. It's our building level. And though I have influence, I think with 
um, an additional, um, not so much the degree, but the advancement and the different influence and the different opportunities that happen with that, I think that'll be able to um, help me to do some of the other things that I definitely want to do as it relates to students, especially students, um, students of color, students that have um, emotional impairments and different type of disabilities, and then just to help and support with the trauma. So those are the main two things. One, for my kid, right, working with my daughter, helping her, and so she doesn't get bored in what she her creation, because it was a long time coming, but she made it and I want to help her with that. Wow. And then two for myself so that I can, you know, be in positions again to be able to help and support her and help other kids. So those are the two things. So if any of you get an email because I need a letter of recommendation, that's what it's for. <laughs> oh, well, congratulations. We're excited for you. Okay. And it is you. Yes. What, tell us about your future endeavors or initiatives. <laughs> You, I know, right? <laughs> now, interesting enough, the COVID-19 pandemic has actually increased my work more um, in two areas that I didn't even think I had the time to even do. So, um, but it's time that I've made. So, um, it has extended my census endeavor. So, I'm still running the census um, for Highland Park. Mm -hmm. So we're really well on our way. We're already four times over our 2010 numbers um, in enumeration participation. So I'm very excited about that as we continue to um, increase and get the word out of its importance. So we are rolling out a um, census campaign actually May 4th um, through a phone canvassing um, in the alternative of door knocking at this point. Um, also, um, I've just really been out here in the community, honestly, safely, um, making sure I have my protective equipment on and everything. But I actually have been um, passing out meals to the population in our community that is between age 18 and 65 that don't qualify for lunches. And um, we've been providing hygiene kits for the homeless and the Oasis shelter as well as lunches and handbags for the women over there um, and disinfecting um, supplies over there for the homeless shelter as well in the community. Um, I actually recently had 2,500 masks made um, for the um, seniors in my community um, in the area in our multi-resident units in the area too, um, alongside the diaper distribution that you guys see um, that I put on social media that I'm still doing um, every couple weeks for low income families. Um, another thing that I actually have been doing is um, I've actually been working on getting a mobile testing unit done in my district because um, in my zip code area, they have the highest um, cases for um, COVID-19, but there's not enough testing going on. So I've actually been working with some resources to try to get that um, deployed into the community on the district. Um, so more of the people in our residence area can get tested for free. Um, last week, I just got appointed to the Highland Park Public School Board. Um, <laughs> so, um, that um, and that education is very important to me and I so like to be in front of all of you who are in the educational space. I'm definitely going to be contacting you to get more insight and seeing how we can actually strengthen our educational system in Highland Park because it needs some serious overhaul and help from the infrastructure on down. So I'm very dedicated and really trying to really get in with the kids in that community. Um, and then I'm also working on some policy that deals with domestic violence, um, looking at how we can deploy more federal resources um, into Michigan, because we're actually the only state that doesn't have federal financial resources for domestic violent cases, um, which is why our cases um, pretty much get swept under the rug and overlooked so much, because we don't have regulation that helps to support that in the judicial system. So I've actually been working with that and just really getting into also including the LGBTQ community um, to be included in that type of policy. And um, last but not least, I can make this announcement in front of all you guys. I'm actually running for Michigan State Representative for Woo! District. <laughs> oh, girl. Yeah. 
now that's I am, awesome. I am officially on the ballot um, in District Seven. Um, so I am definitely passionate about what I do and about community and looking at the next level. I think our district right now um, is looking at sustainability and in everything right now. And um, I think we, we, we know how to start a business, but we need to know how to maintain that and actually be able to profit from it and build legacy from that. And, um, and, and dealing with this COVID situation right now, I think we have a lot. Of discussions we have to make um, have made about public health. We used to have a lot of public health places, and now we don't. And yeah. so, um, so the conversation starts to, to start reconnecting back to the people. And so, I'm looking to build partnerships as opposed to just voters. Okay, Candice. So, tell us about what you do, Candice. What is the name of your um, business, and how, where can we find you? Yes, so I'm the founder and creator of Urban Education. And so what my business is all about is promoting literacy in the urban community. Not only do we provide online resources for parents and children, but we also provide reading intervention services. We uh, have online courses and we also have um, merchandise. So we have our very own brand. You can find us on urbykids.com. That's where you will find our literacy is equity t-shirts, we have backpacks. We also have our online courses on there. And you can learn more about me and my initiative of increasing literacy in the urban community. Right now, we have our very own ebook and curriculum called Literacy Remixed, okay? Because we're remixing the way that we do literacy. So our children, they learn differently and they need to get back to that old school phonics that we kind of lost sight of. We're getting back to the old school phonics. We're teaching parents how to teach their children phonics, which is all about literacy, the ability to be able to read and write. So that is what we have going on right now. Our Literacy Remix online uh, curriculum and tutorial videos, the whole entire course will be available at urbykids.com. This is our second course. Our first course had over 1,316 parents enrolled from 90 countries. Myself and my three-year-old son taught all of those parents how to teach their toddlers how to read and from 90 countries that is so exciting so we had to do a second course oh that is so exciting i'm so proud of you oh amazing aren't you a shooting star so what do you have just this is the last question and i'm gonna let you go tell me what do you think every aspiring entrepreneur should know Every inspiring, uh, aspiring entrepreneur should know that you have what it takes, okay? Because one of the biggest things is that we all, oftentimes feel very discouraged because we wonder, okay, is the, is the world too big for little old me? And just to know that you do have what it takes is that you tap into your inner self and your inner God because I feel like we all have an inner God. And so if you tap into yourself, you do have what it takes. Surround yourself around good people to help encourage you. So that would be my main thing. Oh, beautiful. I think that that is great advice. We are enough. And what does it mean for you to be that girl? Because we have to tell them why. I don't have your yes. last question, but what, why are you that girl? To me, um, I'm that girl because I'm selfless. So I give so much. I give so much, not just to my community, but to all of the hats that I wear as being a woman. And I know a lot of women can understand that is that um, I'm that girl because I'm a great wife. I'm that girl because I'm a great mother because I read to my children at night because I'm making sure that I'm cheering my son on in his basketball games. I'm that girl because I'm a good friend. I listen. I lend an ear. I give good advice. I'm that girl because at times I have to hold my tongue. Although I'm a strong, independent woman, I have a lot to say. Sometimes I just need to learn how to just silence myself. So I'm that girl because I learn how to be the best me in all the areas that I wear my hats. I'm that girl also because I know that I'm not perfect and I'm okay with that. Um, Dr. Sabrina, what, what are your initiatives, honey? Come on, because you didn't been to Paris since we didn't talk to you. You, I mean, we can't keep up. You on every news channel. I mean. <laughs> no, let me be clear. I am not on every news channel. I am on Fox 2. They're my people and I hey. I don't I'm stick with them. Oh. I go where I'm celebrated, not where I'm tolerated. So, oh. they're my people. Ooh. Ooh. 
Okay. That's that's <laughs> who I hang with. So, you know, of course I have the clothing line, um, um, the Dr. Sabrina collection, which we did launch in Paris the last week of February of this year. And it was amazing, um, you know, to be in a hotel where the Eiffel Tower was right outside my room, like every night. I could just wow. lay in my bed and see the Eiffel Tower do its little light show. Um, so it was amazing. I met some amazing people. I have some great opportunities with some people in London and some people in Africa that want to include my line and some things that they're doing. So that's one initiative is the clothing line. But since COVID has happened, of course, that has sparked some new things that I've had to do to help support people. So many people don't know, but I am a... Um, special reservist with the Detroit Police Department under out of um, James Craig's office and so um, one of the things that I've done is I've created a piece called Creating Magic During Uncertainty and magic of course is an acronym and so this I'm gonna turn my screen around I think I could turn it around I think I could turn it around and so that is the look of the workbook uh, that oh, I've put together. I like it. It's nice. It's pretty. It looks like a little angel on there, Dr. Sabrina. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But the thing about um, magic is that when we hear the word magic, we often think of things like a sleight of hand or pulling a rabbit out of a hat. But another word for magic or synonym for magic is power. So in these times of uncertainty, we feel powerless. So when you can tap into places that you do have power, that creates magic. And so magic is an acronym, managing your stress, have an attitude of gratitude, guard your peace because you can't watch CNN all day. You got to shut it down. Identify the things that bring you joy and do them intentionally and don't feel guilty about it. Because a lot of times when we look at all the devastation that's going on around us, we may feel bad about enjoying ourselves or laughing or having that toast or whatever. But no, you're supposed to, in, in order to keep you sane. And then the C is to create your own personal support system. And you need people around you to support you. So that is a PowerPoint. I've been doing it with groups. I've done it with the police officers. I've done it with uh, the Great Lakes Business Women's Council. I've done it with McDonald's um, VPs. So that's something that's available. And then I'm going to take the handout that I created and make it as a downloadable. You can go right to the website and pay the little nine dollars and download it it's very pretty it's very it's very nice so that's one of the things that i'm doing and then another thing that i'm doing because i do do coaching and this is my little coaching thing that's my little flyer for that and it's life strategies coaching with dr sabrina because people don't have strategies of what they're going to do moving forward we are going to be in a new normal we yep. just are. And so because of that, I have some specific strategies that I want to help people get to, to look at their lives differently and to look at all 12 areas, 12 major areas of life. And so that's available for people. And then the last thing that I'm doing as far as new stuff that I've created out of the COVID is that people be asking me all the time to do grant writing training. Oh my God. They ask me all the time. And so I'm doing a virtual grant writing course. And so it's not just a training, it's a course. So you're going to absolutely be doing homework. You're going to be uh, writing and I'm going to send your writing into me. I'm going to critique it. I'm going to give you feedback. And so it's really two packages. One, if you want to just learn how to grant write, that's about six sessions and it's going to start May 4th and it's going to be two sessions a week for um, three weeks. But if you want to be a certified grant writer, if you want to say that you can write grants and get hired to do that, you take two additional sessions and I will teach you the business of grant writing. What questions do you make sure that you're able to answer for the client? What things do you need to ask the client? Because too often people uh, will just take a gig and ain't ask the client nothing. No, there's some things you need to know from them. And if they can't answer, they're not your client. So I'm, yeah. I'm doing that. And then, of course, uh, the last thing is my Essential Vision Atlas. And I had it someplace. I moved it. Oh, I know where it's at. I moved it. And so it is a, um, atlases are, as you all know, because you're all smart women, atlases are maps. It's a book of maps. And so this is a book of maps that I created for, and that is it. It's kind of big, and so it's kind of hard to see. 
but it's wow. a big oversized book and then you get space in the book to work on the different areas um, instead of doing a a vision board, vision board. i put it all in a book i like books and so that's available people can buy that they can you can go to my website and see that and then i have been told just recently that my line is probably going to be featured on a national show uh coming up i'm going to be in new york doing some things with that so you know life is good child <laughs> <laughs> oh honey too yes a pop, <laughs> what a way to pivot into the virtual world <laughs> I am, again, super excited to have you guys here. I'm going to wrap up with this picture, guys, because we're looking like, you know what? It's time to go. It's 8.33, and I love y'all for these two hours, right? So we are wrapping up, and I just want to end this with, you guys remember since we reminiscing, right? I, I could not leave without doing this, right? So I patiently waited while we were at the Make Your Mark Symposium as all of you beautiful ladies gave your 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 experiences and your knowledge and the gems to the audience and then it was my turn to come on the stage guys <laughs> it was my turn to get on the stage oh my god and go. i'm giving the keynote right <laughs> and i'm thinking oh my god the kids they're listening they're engaged they love me oh wow and look <laughs> There we go. I said, look at them. I said, they love each other so much. <laughs> they can't stop taking selfies with each other, right? <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, Tasha. In my mind, I'm telling myself, Tasha, give them a few more minutes. They're just getting to know each other. Give them, give them five more minutes. So I'm constantly talking, and I'm like, yeah, you can be everything you want to be. And I still, I see the phones, and they're like, clap. <laughs> yes, yeah. So. Finally, I have to make the announcement to the ambassadors and the panelists to sit down <laughs> right now. I am oh, speaking. Buddy. I cannot believe it. So, fine. The night is over with. We laugh about it. So, um, on our house at the Billabar, Sharon, <laughs> we had guests, Stacy and, and, and Sabrina, and we're talking about the symposium and how much fun we had. And, you know, like, I'm like, you know what, guys, it was really beautiful, but I don't think anybody got any clippings of me speaking or pictures or anything because you guys were taking selfies and y'all was finding the light. Come into the light, Caroline. That's the what light. I'm like, look at that. Oh, that light. Look, that light. <laughs> look at them, right? So, Dr. Sabrina, she's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I wasn't a part of that crew. I was sitting in my spot and I'm like, Sabrina, you were with <laughs> you were with the crew. <laughs> and Sharon, and, and look, Sharon is the like, about this is where it took off. Sharon was calling y'all to the light. She's yeah. like, Sharon's like, I found the light. And I'm like, do they not see me on the stage? Like, <laughs> so, I thought it was over. I thought it was over. I did. I thought it was over. <laughs> I did. <laughs> okay, so y'all hear that? They thought that it was over. Okay, so I'm going to bring to attention Exhibit A. We are in the courtroom. <laughs> Let me see it. <laughs> no. Hey, I wasn't Brenda. a part of that. I wasn't a part of that, see? <laughs> You were calling them to the light from this picture. Yeah. This is why you was not a part of this. You was you were you were calling them to the light. Now in this picture, this is where I'm like, oh my gosh, they don't see me. And Sabrina says, I was not a part of the group. So I put the pictures up. Look at Sabrina. Hand it up. <laughs> having a grand time. So thank you so much for being here tonight and being a part of that girl but i appreciate each of you and there is no word to describe how magical this is so we're out of here love you. Goodbye, we Stacey. love you too boo the time bye bye, bye, -bye. bye. 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 bye.